Hi everybody. After sealing and riveting the left tank, I'm trying to gather enough courage to start with the right tank. In the meantime, I'm dimpling and countersinking the ribs and spars of the left and right wing. I start with the left wing, mostly countersinking the main spar. The material, the aluminum of the main spar, the webs are too thick to uh, dimple. You would uh, seriously break them if you would uh, try to dimple it so you do the countersink. Um, countersink a little bit deeper than normal and that's because the dimples of the wing skin should fit into the dimple in the uh, countersink part. So It's a lot of work. took me several days to do all the dimple and countersink work on both wings. I do it while the tank is setting. You can see the, uh, the right wing tank in the bottom left corner. It's not, uh, not sealed again, not sealed yet. I'm waiting for another session together with my dad to, uh, to do that. You, you really need two guys to uh, to seal and dimple the tank. Here I'm countersinking, no, dimpling the uh, the ribs and also the trailing edge of the wing. The top part is where the ailerons and flaps are going to be attached to. And although I dimple them, uh, I, I also countersink them later because you can see that here. Um, because again, the dimples of the skin should be really into those into those holes. You cannot do it with the ribs because the ribs are too thin. If you would also countersink them, you would take away too much material. And uh, but in the in the spar, the rear spar, it's possible to do that. The material is thick enough. It's not as thick as the front spar, the main spar. That's why you dimple it and you cut or sink it. In this session I also primed the, tr uh, the leading edges. Not the wings, the, the tanks of course, but the other leading edges of the wings. But that's not in film because every time when I prime something, I don't film it because it's too messy. Okay, here again I'm countersinking the other side of the wing. It took me three days to do this, so uh, it was a lot of work. As you can see, I'm also uh, working on getting the tubing in there for electricity. In the left wing, that's already done. In the right wing, it isn't. Here, I'm adding the right wing and removing the left wing. Now, do the same for the right wing. First, remove the skin, part of the skin, and then again countersinking the main spar both sides and dimpling all the ribs and also the rear spar. Although the drill and the squeezer are both very light, if you do this for several hours you actually you get sore hands because uh, yeah, it's a very repetitious uh, movement. So 
So sometimes I do other stuff in between. Just to, um, yeah, give my arms some rest. And then I continue. Also, the compressor sometimes needs some extra time to uh, get back to pressure. If you use a squeezer, actually that doesn't use that much, although it's much uh, stronger, it doesn't need that much air. However, the drill really needs a lot of air. It's very f air insufficient, you could say. I'm trying to clean up in between, also to... Uh, It was the next day. Here we use a squeezer. Again on the other side. And as you can see, every time I uh, take a little break, or else your arms will cramp. And as you can see in the right wing, I didn't start with the tubing yet. I created the holes so small that the tubing cannot go out of there. Um, but it's very hard to get in also, so uh, yeah. It takes some time. Again here I'm um, countersinking the rear spar that I just dimpled. It doesn't do much, it just shaves off a little bit but it's uh yeah it's just enough to get uh, the dimples of the skin in also i all uh you can i don't think i have a video but i also prime spot those uh those contrasting parts so what i do is in the end ju but just before i start priming the rest i take a little pencil and um i'm prime spotting all those counter sunk holes which means that I put a little bit of prime in there and uh, this way it will not uh, oxidate too much it's probably one of the most expensive pieces of, um, of tools the squeezer but I, I really like it it's uh, it's invaluable if you have to do this by hand well, you'd probably gain a lot of uh, muscle, but uh, yeah, it's really hard. And it's not only great for dimpling, it's also great for for riveting if you rivet on the, on the outside parts. It's really a, a joy to work with. Yeah, it's the, it's the best piece of tooling I have. Okay. Next time I hope I can start with the tank again and building my pie in the sky. <laughs>